Hi there, this is Jerry from Sadnote, and today I'm going to show you how I use Phrase Expander in my clinic to complete my documentation on a typical day. So I'm going to go through a few scenarios with different conditions and different kind of patients. We're going to start with a, a typical physical. So let's start with the HPI section and um, I use this dot phrase is called physical and uh, I insert my dot phrase press and shift so this pop-up window will show you some aspects of the note that you can edit and customize according to what you're asking the patient. So I go through a series of questions for social history and then uh, family history and then some questions particular for female patients. So let's pretend this is a 50 year old female that is a new patient. So I'm going to click establish care and you can see how it inserts the text here. Let's say that the patient smokes and uh, drinks some alcohol, no drugs, regular diet, maybe exercises every day, and uh, maybe the patient is a nurse and lives with family. If I want to edit this, I can click here and maybe add uh, with husband and three kids. And then let's say the patient has family history of diabetes and maybe cancer. Again, let's edit this really quickly and put um, mother with breast cancer and then since it's a female patient I'm gonna select this and it will expand some other questions like the last pap smear, sexual activity, contraception, let's say the patient has an IUD and uh, menstrual cycle. If there is a, any other pr a problem that we're addressing during the visit I'll click here and then add whatever problem the patient is having. So I'm gonna insert the HPI now let's gonna move to uh, the physical exam and here uh, I'm gonna use a dot phrase and remember there are two ways you can look for for uh, certain dot phrases you can if you already know all your um, abbreviations um, you can use click um, semicolon and then PE adult and then you can use your keyboard to select the one that I want to use for example here I want to use the um, let's see adult uh, I want to use the one cardiopulmonary because uh, has elements of um, lung and heart auscultation so but uh, if you don't know the abbreviation or you're not sure you can always uh, do a quick find and you do that by uh, let's say to trigger that you press alt space and then you can find your dot phrase so for example and this is the one I want to insert so I press shift Great. and you can see it has the cardiovascular exam and lungs and then moving to the assessment and plan I use the dot phrase health maintenance and let's insert this one and uh, you can ignore this two uh, spaces so the health maintenance dot phrase will tell you all the tests you need to order according to the U.S. Permanent Tax Force uh, by age. So let's say if this was a 50 year old female, let's say 50 and then female, and you see how some things change like the pap smear. Um, for example, if it was a uh, <clears throat> 49, you won't see the uh, colorectal cancer screening. Let's go back to 15. So, uh, 
let's say that we order a, um, a stool test and uh, maybe we want to make this bigger so we can see the menu. Uh, let's say that uh, we did a, a pap smear today and she's due for a mammogram. So we're going to order that. Maybe we gave her the flu shot. Um, and the patient is a smoker. So uh, we click that and we counsel the patient on cessation or maybe we start Chantix and um, uh, she doesn't need advanced care planning right now. So we're going to insert this. Um, let's say that we want to add the pelvic exam we did today. So I'll insert P, let's do pelvic. Perfect. So, and that's it. That's um, how you document the physical exam. Let's do another example now. So let's say that we order some labs for this patient and um, Maybe the, we want to message the results of the pap smear and the mammogram. So this is a message. Maybe we're sending a letter or a portal message. So let's see, mammogram. Uh, so this is in Spanish and this is in English. So let's insert the one in English. And let's see if we want to send something for pap smear. And maybe the patient will need it in five years instead of three. And let's say that her labs were normal. So so we can quickly craft a, a letter for the patient. Um, let's do the next example. So. Let's say you work in urgent care or you just have a patient that comes today for a upper respiratory infection or cold. So let's do our HPI. So you see how um, when I type this, um, there's some dot phrases that show up. I prefer to trigger my dot phrases using a semicolon but you can always uh, change this. So for example, for URI, uh, let's say if it's an adult, we insert this dot phrase. Um, these are uh, symptoms that is a yes or no question. So let's say the patient didn't have any sore throat. And uh, so you will see it changes to the nice sore throat, maybe no cough. So same thing, the nice sore throat or cough, um, shortness of breath, fever, sick contacts. So let's insert this and uh, physical exam. There's a physical exam specific for a URI visit. And it's right here. And it has um, some elements of uh, throat exam and maybe um, uh, we check the ears and then the assessment and plan. Now, the reason I don't use a dot for the dot phrases is because you might be using some dot phrases in your EMR that already start with a dot, so I don't want to create a conflict. But you're um, welcome to change that. Some people put their initials uh, to start the dot phrase. Uh, so like dot GGB and then diabetes, for example. In this case, we're going to do the URI. So I use hashtag for all the uh, assessment plan templates. So let's insert this one. 
and this is what I usually do with patients with uh, URI, you can always edit this in uh, the software. Our next example, it's gonna be a patient that comes for a follow-up for diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. So let's start with our HPI and let's see diabetes and um, depending if the patient is an insulin I use this template if it's using just uh, PO meds I use this one let's use this one for now and let's say the patient is using glipicide and um, there are some uh, things that I go through and as the, the patient maybe the patient is checking the blood sugar um, let's add this and then um, our dot rate for hypertension so you see uh, how it, uh, the difference between the HPI and the assessment plan is sometimes I put the HPI or nothing and that's usually the template for the HPI and then for assessment plan has a hashtag if it's something pertinent for a physical exam it has PE at the end like I said, you can always edit this and um, customize it to your preferences. So let's do the HPI now. So I'm going to insert with shift. And then let's say the patient is on these two medications. And we're going to insert this. And for hyperlipidemia, we're going to insert this. And maybe the patient is taking a statin. Let's move to the physical exam. So if I didn't listen to the heart and lungs, I use what I call the extra short or not touch uh, dot phrase. So it's this one right here. And then my assessment and plan Let's see, let's uh, insert one for diabetes. Let's see. And let's say it's controlled. And we're going to continue with the same management. Uh, maybe we're going to do some labs. And maybe we're going to refer the patient for a retina exam. If we did a monofilament test, uh, I added here. And maybe I, I should add that uh, on the physical exam. So let's see, diabetes, uh, physical exam, this right here. So we did a monofilament test. Perfect. And then let's do our hypertension assessment and plan. And let's say it's not controlled and we adjust the medications. Okay, and then um, our hyperlipidemia assessment and plan. Perfect, so that's uh, our uh, third example. Uh, the next one, it's, uh, so let's say we order some labs for this patient, so I'm gonna do another message and um, let's see, let's say the cholesterol was high. So lab cholesterol um, and I, maybe I'm not gonna um, send any medications. So I'm gonna use this one. And well, this one is in Spanish, for example. And if the rest of the labs are normal, I use this template. Let's do it in Spanish as well. Perfect. So next example, a uh, patient comes with a rash. And uh, when a patient comes with a rash, I have a, a very generic template. Um, for rashes that I can use and 
So we can use this one and it's a very generic description of a rash location, timing, if it's itchy or not. But let's, um, so you can use this one. Uh, let's say in this case, the patient, uh, it seems like he has shingles. So let's do a different template. So um, one other thing that I want to point out. So if you type shingles, it will uh, search uh, the abbreviation itself. But if I type um, herpes, let me show you. So I won't find that unless you do the quick find. So let's do the quick find. And if I type herpes, then you can find uh, the shingles dot phrase. So let's insert this one. And let's say that if you need to change location, you can edit here. Let's leave it like this, left, upper, back, then a physical exam. So I'm going to insert a extra short or a not touch exam. And then on the skin section, I'm just going to edit this and insert the physical exam uh, pertinent to shingles. So let's say we said it was on the left upper back, well, left trunk, that's fine. Excellent. So assessment and plan. Let's see. And we're done with the notes. Our next example is going to be a patient with a knee pain, maybe knee osteoarthritis. Let's see. So, knee. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to use this one. And let's say it's the left knee. And the pain is not well controlled. Physical exam. Again, I'm going to insert the extra short exam and then maybe use that in um, a knee specific exam. So there was a left knee. Okay, and the assessment and plan, let's see, knee, what's our left knee, and let's say that we're going to do an injection today. So we're going to do a procedure here, I'm going to do a knee injection, it's right here, I'm just going to do the left knee insert our procedure and then when it comes time for billing uh, on top of billing a probably 9214 for this visit i might want to add a cpt code for a knee injection so we can easily find that cpt code like this knee injection and usually you're gonna find all the cpt codes with a star at the end so let's insert this and this is gonna be your CPT code for the knee injection. In our next example, um, it's another message to the patient. So for example, maybe we did an x-ray for this patient and we're gonna tell them uh, that we, find, we found osteoarthritis. Let's see. Okay, so that was simple and quick, which is the whole point of using dot phrases. Um, our next patient of the day came with anxiety or depression, so we're going to do a quick documentation of uh, anxiety. Let's use lowercase. And um, we're going to use the, let's say this is a follow-up, so I'm going to use this one. And uh, 
let's see, a uh, patient has anxiety and depression, right? So patients are running medications, no side effects, uh, it's going well, no other symptoms, not suicidal. Okay, and then our physical exam is going to be an extra short exam. And our assessment and plan. Sorry, doing anxiety and depression. Maybe we did a, a testing score. Um, and uh, maybe we did a, also a PHQ-9. And let's say we're gonna continue with the same treatment. Um, so the patient is uh, improving. We're gonna continue with the same medications. And that's our uh, documentation for our patient with anxiety and depression. Um, let's do uh, three more cases. So let's say this patient comes back later and lives in an apartment and is requesting a letter for their landlord for um, to be able to keep a pet inside. So um, we can quickly use this uh, pet companion letter. And uh, it's one of my favorite dot phrases because they're usually very happy when I give them this letter and they get to keep a dog or a cat with them. Um, next example, uh, let's say we do a well child exam uh, or visit for a six year old. Okay, so HPI, well child check, and you see it goes by months or uh, if I type dash year, it goes by year. So we're gonna do a six-year-old so let's say um, patient is eating cereal for breakfast and peanut butter and jelly sandwich and dinner has uh, chicken nuggets and snacks and chips it's a pretty bad diet for this kid Maybe he has uh, childhood obesity. So uh, basic questions appropriate for age. We can go through all of them with the parent. And physical exam. Well, child check. Is that PE? So I have infant, a teenager, or a toddler or child. So we're going to use this one. And uh, if I did any general exam, um, maybe I'll check here or maybe not. And then let's move to the assessment and plan of my well child check. And again, year, and let's say we're going to do so if. if Again, this might be hard to remember, so maybe instead of doing this, we're gonna do a quick find. And we'll say, well, child check for a six year. And we're gonna quickly find it here. Insert it. So these are the recommended vaccines. Um, if the patient has uh, Medicaid or medical, uh, you might need some labs. Um, and then genetic counseling appropriate for age. And uh, our last example is if I'm working in the hospital. Um, so I use, uh, usually I have dot phrases for the physical exam and the assessment and plan. The HPI, I find that every patient has a different story. So um, I just dictate that. So, um, for physical exam in inpatient, I use all the inpatient dot phrases start 
well now for the inpatient physical exam let's see adult uh, so this is the inpatient and then if the patient is in the ICU basically meaning that it's intubated I use this dot phrase so in this case I'm going to use this one this example is going to be for a chest painter so assessment and plan chest pain and you're going to see all the inpatient dot phrases um, and with the inpatient INPT and insert that and that's usually what you do for a chest painter and um, that's it hope you found this tutorial helpful if you had any questions just uh, send us an email go to our website 